Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 21 video. Today's episode, we're going to be rebuilding the New Orleans Saints with the new addition of Quan Alexander, who I believe actually, it was a pretty good trade. Kiko Alonso and I believe uh, like a late, a late round pick for Quan Alexander. I feel like he's been bouncing around from teams because nobody really wants to pay him. I don't know why exactly he's been bouncing around teams. That's just my opinion of it. That's just what I think. But either way, I still think it was a good trade for the Saints. So other than that, boys, it is time to jump into this rebuild. So the overlook of the team, and this team is absolutely stacked, and I'm not going to make any trades in the first season because I feel like we can win the Super Bowl in the first season. So this O-line is the most stacked I've seen out of any O-line. It doesn't need any upgrading at all. Running back, great. Receivers, pretty solid. Some of them are old, but it's okay. Still, um, defensively, we look great in development terms. Maybe a new middle linebacker and some defensive backs. I'm going to move Malcolm Jenkins down to defensive back and start Chancey Gardner-Johnson. Probably going to trade Malcolm Jenkins at the end of the season. But Malcolm Jenkins is going to stay on the team. We're going to try and win the Super Bowl in the first year because this team is absolutely stacked. The Saints technically don't need a rebuild. But they have a lot of old players that they do need to get rid of after the first season. Drew Brees will probably retire in the first season. Well, in the first season of Madden. So that's pretty disappointing. So other than that, everything on this team looks pretty good. So apart from that, boys, it's time to jump into the midseason. Here we are in the midseason coming off our loss to the Bears as we are 6-1. and one, And we are top of the division above the 6-2 and two Carolina Panthers, which is interesting. We have players to resign like Jared Cook, who is pretty old. Probably will retire after the season, so I'm not going to pick him up. But Marcus Williams is here, and I would like to keep him around the team. We have negative cap room, so we can't sign anybody here. I guess I'll have to fix that at the end of the season. Uh, but that's definitely a big problem right now. It's a do-or-die season, I guess, for us. But uh, right now, I'm going to spend some coach XP into expert scouting and increase weekly player goals. And other than that, boys, let's just jump into the playoffs. So here we are in the playoffs as we are coming off a win to the Jaguars. As we are 11-5 here to play the 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, Green Bay Packers, we won the division above the 9-7 and seven Carolina Panthers. And Drew Brees actually had a really good season in the NFL and the 8th best defense. So amazing season for us. Drew Brees, 4,300 yards, 40 TDs, 10 interceptions. Rushing-wise, Alvin Kamara had 7 TDs but, and uh, 1,200 yards. But how did Latavius Murray get 12 touchdowns? EA still needs to fix that glitch. Michael Thomas was a monster. Jared Cook had 13 touchdowns. And defensively... Quan Alexander with the most tackles on the team, most tackles for a loss, goes to 18 for Marcus Davenport. Sacks is 6 for Cameron Jordan. Interceptions is 4 for Malcolm Jenkins. Safeties is 0, and defensive touchdowns is 0. So other than that, boys, I'm going to simulate this wild card round against the Green Bay Packers to see if we can move on to the divisional round. Can we do it? We... Maybe, come on. We, we can. Here to face the... 9-7 Arizona Cardinals, so I'm actually going to simulate this. If we make it to the NFC Championship, I will hop in. Can we beat the Arizona Cardinals, who are 9-7? and seven? No, we cannot. Getting blown out 42-10 to 10 by Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. Anyways, let's just jump into the offseason. Here we are in the offseason as the 49ers beat the Browns in the Super Bowl. We have players who signed, such as Marcus Williams, but I'm pretty sure we don't have a lot of cap. And yeah, we don't have any cap, so we really can't re-sign anyone here which is really disappointing, but I will be making a bunch of trades, but I can't trade right now, obviously, because it's past the trade deadline. Apparently, we have Jam yeah, Jameis Winston. I completely forgot about that. Um, he's not going to be our future QB. I know that, <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure we have to resign him anyways for him to be our future QB. I need to start Deontay Harris. I don't know why I wasn't doing that before. He's a superstar development. He's really short, but it's fine. Um, Jared Cook is way too regressed, but Quan Alexander now has superstar development with secure tackler, which is nice. And so does Demario Davis. Demario Davis progresses really, really nicely in this game. I don't know why, but he's really old. Um, but yeah, I also met him in real life. That's pretty cool to say, but I guess no one really cares. Nobody asked, but still, uh, pretty cool to see in my opinion. Other than that, boys, I would say that it is time to jump into some free agency. And here we are on free agency, and obviously we don't, we don't have any money because we couldn't even resign anybody. So other than that, boys, let's just get into the draft. So here we are on the draft, drafting a QB, Luke Miller. One of my friends in real life is named Luke Miller. Again, nobody asked, but it's kind of cool, I guess. And next, we're trading away our defensive tackle and a fifth-round pick for a first-round pick because I'm looking at a certain person, and that person will be defensive back Josh Burnett, number four player in the class, very good pick. I wish he just had better than normal development, though. 
So obviously, I didn't mention before, it should have been obvious to you guys, but Jameis Winston, we couldn't re-sign, and Drew Brees did retire last season, so that's why I picked up the QB. And hopefully that strong safety uh, progresses into something. Chancey Gardner-Johnson playing free safety now because um, Marcus Williams is gone. So other than that, boys, it is time to jump into some trades and drop some dead cap. So this is the first of many trades. I'm dropping a lot of dead cap because there's a lot of old players on this team. Demario Davis, Emmanuel Sanders for a second, a five, and a six. Next, we're trading away a defensive tackle, a halfback, and a fourth-round pick for the projected number one pick in the draft. I'm trading away a lot of value for very little because most teams don't want these guys. Next, we're trading away Malcolm Jenkins, Janoris Jenkins, and Josh Hill, I believe, for a fifth-round pick. We got robbed on that, but they take up so much cap, and it's just so much more worth it just to drop them and let them go. So after the trades, it wasn't too much of a difference. I see it as more of depth players being traded off the team. But defensively, it was a big difference in my opinion. Um, but still, I think it's going to be good for us in the long term. They had a lot of cap on them. So other than that, boys, let's just jump into the midseason mark. So I know a lot of you guys are still going to complain about those trades. But still, we are 5-3 and three at the midseason mark, second division. We're still a good team. Toronto Armstead and Ryan Ramchak are here. Um... Dang, Teron Armstead's going to cost a lot of money. I'm thinking about not re-signing him, then moving Ryan Ramchek to left tackle, and then just picking up a right tackle in the draft. So, Ryan Ramchek re-signs. I don't want to re-sign Teron Armstead. Kind of unrealistic, but, like, he's so much money. He costs so much money, and I need that for future players, dude. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore re-signs. Marcus Davenport, I would like back. Marcus Davenport wants so much money for his ability. We're going to have to re-sign him, though, which is going to suck. But still, we re sign Marcus Davenport. Deontay Harris is here. That's actually a really cheap contract for his ability and his potential, so I'm definitely going to re-sign him on that. Deontay Harris re-signs with the team, and everyone else here don't really have an interest for it. Looks like the CPU picked up Matt Breida in free agency. But, um, yeah, other than that, I'm not going to re-sign Toronto Armstead just because he costs way too much money. And here we are in the playoffs, coming off a win to the Jets, and we did not make the playoffs, finishing 8-8, eight and eight, and I can already hear you guys in the comments, oh, it's because you didn't, you traded away all those other players, and you didn't re-sign Theron Armstead, I can already hear you guys saying that, it's pissing me off. Luke Miller, almost 4,000 yards, 31 TDs, 31 TDs, and way too many interceptions, but Alvin Kamara, 13 TDs, 1,400 yards, Michael Thomas was solid, very good ball distribution. Marshawn Lattimore with the most tackles on team, most tackles for a loss goes to 17 for Cameron Jordan, most sacks goes to 7.5 for Marcus Davenport, most interceptions, 5 for Kendall Beckwith, which is pretty good. Safeties is 0 and defensive touchdowns is 0. So not the best season, not the worst season, but other than that, boys, it is time to jump into the offseason. So here we are in the offseason as the Baltimore Ravens beat the Packers in the Super Bowl. That's what I like to see. I'm a Ravens fan. But Teron Armstead, again, I, I just don't want to re-sign him. I'm going to move Ryan Ramchek to left tackle. It's fine. I'll pick up a right tackle in the draft. Our O-line's already amazing. Kendall Beckwith is here, and uh, I kind of I kind of would like to re-sign him, but he's 27, and he starts regression next year. So I don't think he'll progress to, into anything. I don't even think he's going to make it to an 80 overall. Again, Teron Armstead, $17 million per year. I, I just don't want to resign that. We only have $23 million left in cap, and I would like to pick up a defensive tackle or someone else in free agency. I just can't resign him for that much. I know left tackle is the second highest paid position in the NFL, but still, it might be a little bit unrealistic, but I'm, I just can't resign him. It's terrible. And Luke Miller apparently has star development now, so that's great to see, actually. Uh, with, where is it? Okay, uh, yeah, star development works for me. And Alvin Kamara now has Superstar X Factor with the abilities Max Security, Matchup Nightmare, and RB Apprentice, which is great. As you can see, it says plus Superstar X Factor. And Quan Alexander now has Superstar X Factor along with Kendall Beckwith, obviously, who has Star. Zach Bond has Star Development. Marshawn Lattimore has Superstar Development with Unfakeable and Pick Artist. And see here, Quan Alexander has progressed very well with shutdown and adrenaline rush as his new abilities. So picking up Quan Alexander seems to be the right move, apparently. And Zach Bond now has star development, the rookie for this year's at least, but not in Madden. But still, uh, for some reason, Chancey Gardner-Johnson isn't starting at safety. I don't know why. Uh, I guess I'll just fix that off camera. But other than that, boys, I would say that it is time to jump into some free agency. 
So here we are after free agency and offensively, we didn't really do too much. I'm going to have to probably pick up a tight end, but we did pick up a right tackle in free agency. He was a right guard. I moved him to right tackle. So a quick replacement. We picked up Calais Campbell and moved him to defensive tackle, and we picked up Jair Alexander as well with shut down short route KO and deep out KO, and we picked up Justin Reed as well. So very, very good pickups. I would much rather have all these players than... um. Toronto Armstead and all these players were relatively cheap. There wasn't anyone going after them, which was very interesting. So other than that, let's just jump into the draft. Left end, Sammy Benson or Benson, whatever. Benson, my boy from regular show. Normal development, 75 overall. Next, we're picking up a defensive back, 71 overall. Hidden development, we're picking him up in the second round. So this was a very good pick in my opinion. Still really, really like it. And this is what the team looks like after the draft. As tight end, we still need. I guess I'll pick that in a trade or something. But we did get a wide receiver later in the draft. And, um, yeah. So, I guess this guy is here. And the strong safety that we picked up, I guess, the year before is now playing defensive back. Because we got Justin Reed there. And slot wide receiver, I guess we're going to need that at some point. But still, uh, team is looking pretty good. And I like it so far. I wish middle linebacker was a little bit better, but still, I guess we can improve on that. So let's get into the midseason. Here we are at the midseason mark coming off a win to the Panthers, and we have a breakout player. Who is that going to be? I'll probably do that later. I'll probably forget, actually. Marcus Davenport. Uh, probably going to get Superstar Dev. I'll probably do that off camera. And again, I'll probably forget. But still, uh, we are 3-5 and five somehow. Third in the division. I guess middle linebacker does affect it completely. Uh, I accidentally clicked on this. Did not mean to click on this at all for the Seattle Seahawks game. But still, uh, I don't know what's up with me. I'm freaking chugging up right now. Uh, Quine Alexander is here. Sorry for saying um and like too much. But still, Quine Alexander is here. And I would like to re-sign him. And he does stay with the team. Eric McCoy is here. 86 overall center. Um, just said um again, even though I... Just said I wasn't going to do that. But Chancey Gardner-Johnson, free safety. I would like to keep him around. And he does stay with the team. So that's pretty exciting for me. And Erica McCoy, since we have enough money, I would like to re-sign him as well. And he re-signs with the team. Face scan doesn't look anything like him. But still, other than that, boys, pretty happy with the re-signings. And it's time to jump into the playoffs. And here we are in the playoffs for our third season. Not making the playoffs. Coming off a loss to the Buccaneers as we finish... Five, five and eleven. How do we go from three and five to five and eleven? Luke Miller didn't do bad. Sixth best offense, seventh best defense. How do we go six best offense and seventh best defense? Then go five and eleven. Luke Miller, thirty-seven touchdowns, twenty-one interceptions was god awful for twenty-one interceptions. Alvin Kamara did pretty good. Michael Thomas was a freaking monster. Uh, not great in yards, but still, well, he had over a thousand yards, but fourteen TDs was great. Quan Alexander promotes with the most tackles. Tackles for a loss goes to Dexter Reynolds. Sacks goes to eleven and a half for Marcus Davenport. Interceptions one for Josh Burnett, and safeties is zero. Well, one for Cameron Jordan actually, and defensive touchdowns is zero. So other than that, boys, I don't know how we went five and eleven. Doesn't make any sense at all. But other than that, let's just jump straight into the off season. Here we are in the offseason as the Titans blew out the Seahawks 47-8 to in the Super Bowl. Stomped them, kind of like how the Seahawks blew out the Broncos in that one Super Bowl. Sorry to do that to you, Broncos fan, but it still happened. So it was pretty funny to watch anyways, but still. Uh, we're going to be looking into the team as there's no one that I want to re-sign. Offensively, we look the same, and defensively, looks like our middle linebacker did progress to a star development as he was a rookie before. 73 overall, and where is it? There he is, plus star dev. And everything else here kind of looks the same to me. Marcus Davenport, I forgot to do that freaking challenge. But still, here we are in free agency. Obviously, don't have that much money. Only $7 million, so I can't pick up big players with that. So anyways, let's just get into the draft. So we're going all out this season in the draft. So I'm going to trade away my draft picks. A 2 and a 4 for Travis Kelsey, who we need a freaking tight end. Finally, next we're picking up a defensive tackle. Fletcher Cox for a 1st and a 6 from the Philadelphia Eagles. So this was a great trade in my opinion Ooh, sorry for choking up again i don't know what's going on with me but still travis kelsey here a great pickup for us going all out this season as calais campbell i for some reason i just realized retired but we have fletcher cox here so that is a good good sign so other than that let's get into the midseason mark here we are at the midseason mark coming off a win to the panthers as we are four and three second in the division behind the seven and one tampa bay buccaneers that's pretty surprising that they are seven and one fletcher cox cameron jordan will lutz and all these other players are here but i'm not going to resign them because just like every season in the final season i just don't resign them 
So here we are in the playoffs, making the playoffs with a first round bye, coming off a loss to the Jaguars, 31 to 21. As we are top of the division, 12 and 4, great comeback on our season, and Luke Miller was outstanding, the best offense in the NFL and the best defense in the NFL. Finally, Luke Miller, 4,400 yards, 45 TDs, 11 interceptions. Alvin Kamara. Uh, not great in touchdowns, but amazing in yards. Michael Thomas was an absolute monster. And uh, defensively, we have Dexter Reynolds, the middle linebacker with the most tackles. Most tackles for a loss goes to 11 for Fletcher Cox. Most sacks goes to 12 and a half for Fletcher Cox. 11 and a half for Marcus Davenport. Interceptions, 3 for Jair Alexander. And safeties is 0. And defensive touchdowns are... Zero. So other than that, boys, pretty excited. Let's look at the yearly awards. Who won the MVP? Josh Allen. Luke Miller was at three. So that's kind of cool. Luke Miller at two for Offensive Player of the Year. And best QB goes to Luke Miller. I don't know how um, freaking Russell Wilson got Offensive Player of the Year, but uh, Luke Miller got somehow best QB. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but I guess it happened. I guess he is the best QB in the NFL for the NFC. But still... We are here to face the 9-7 Green Bay Packers. So I'm going to actually hop into this matchup against the Green Bay Packers. So let's just jump straight into it. And here we are to face the Green Bay Packers as we are down, but now up 24-20 against the Green Bay Packers with one minute left in the fourth quarter. Very interesting. And it comes down to the wire as we win 24-20 against the Green Bay Packers. And we're going to be moving on to the conference championship here we are in the NFC Championship here to face the 11-5 Seattle Seahawks as we beat the Green Bay Packers 24-20. So other than that, boys, we'll let's just jump straight into it. And in the fourth quarter, four minutes left in the game, we are up 31-7, 38-7, completely pounding the Seahawks into the ground just like the Titans did in the Super Bowl. 14-38 against the Seattle Seahawks as we destroy them and we are moving on to the Super Bowl. And of course, who who other to play than the freaking Browns? I hate this, dude. They're in every freaking Super Bowl I play. I'm saying freaking way too much, and it sounds weird and stupid. But Luke Miller has quick draw and spin cycle as his superstar abilities because he did get the best QB award. And everyone else on offense looks the same. And defensively, we look the same. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we look the same. So other than that, boys, I'd say it's time to jump into this matchup against the Cleveland Browns. Now in the Super Bowl against the Cleveland Browns, we are currently winning 17 to 13 against the Browns, and it is the fourth quarter. So we're gonna need to stop here actually because it's on the goal line, on the nine yard line, nine seconds left. We're gonna need to win this one. Very very important. And oh, the clock's gonna run out. Oh, okay, the clock's gonna run out. I guess they didn't decide to spike the ball. Um, okay. I guess the Saints win the Super Bowl. Uh, if that's how we got to win, that's how we got to win. So I guess it just be like that sometime. So it looks like your Super Bowl MVP is going to be Fletcher Cox. Seven tackles, three sacks, zero TDs, and zero interceptions. Very surprising to see a defensive tackle win the Super Bowl MVP, but I guess it is what it is. Still, anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys all enjoyed because I know I did. Um, successfully rebuilding the Saints, stripping all the old pieces off the team, and putting new pieces on. Quan Alexander did end up being a superstar X Factor, so I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy with the way he turned out. So I guess the trade with the Niners? Yeah, the, with the Niners. I feel like a retard for saying that. With the Niners, worked out successfully because he's a superstar X Factor in Madden now. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.